Heating and Air Friday Night Rivals presented by Consolidated Dispatch Agency is coming to you live from Gene Cox Stadium in Tallahassee, Florida, where tonight's matchup is the Lincoln Trojans hosting the Childs Timberwolves. Hi, everybody. I'm Ben Cinco. Emily Peters is our sideline reporter. will be joining us shortly. And with me in the booth, as always, help me call the action is Eric Llewellyn. Eric, I never really like to keep these openers positive, but reality is both teams are coming off of losses. Lincoln last week suffered their first defeat of the season against the juggernaut that is Gadsden County. Uh, Childs, four consecutive losses. Uh, you know, if, if each of these teams is going to want to get back on Victory Road, what's the, what's the key for each team? Well, I, I think for Childs, look, we've seen him a, a few times already this year. It's always turnovers that get in the way. They're going to have to protect the ball better than they have been. I think for Lincoln, they really need to get pressure on the quarterback for Childs, get pressure on Taylor Jacobs Jr., get in his face, make him make bad decisions. As far as key players, I go right back to Taylor Jacobs yep. Jr. He's yep. got to avoid doing that, and I think it's incumbent upon Lincoln to force him into those situations. As far as Lincoln goes, Christian Sims, leading rusher. He's their quarterback, touches the ball every play. I think he's the key for Lincoln tonight. Very good. Thank you, Eric. Well, the exciting action kicks off next on Tallahassee CW. Welcome back to Gene Cox Stadium in Tallahassee, Florida for Friday Night Rivals. Ben Cinco, Eric Llewellyn calling the action for you up in the booth. Emily Peters on the sidelines with us. Emily, how are you tonight? Ben, it's a beautiful night for some some from some football and a perfect opportunity for Lincoln to get back on track. They tallied their first loss of the season last Friday against Gadsden County. The final score was 31 to 21. And Ben, I know you and I were surprised at that result. The most shocking part about it are those 31 points given up by the Lincoln defense. They're normally the heart and soul of this team. And just up until last week, they had only given up about a touchdown in a single game. I spoke with veteran member Kendrick Scott, and he called the game a wake-up call. He said, I don't think we were being arrogant but I do think that we were riding a high of winning games and we needed that experience to fix some weak spots the Trojans have been working all week to tie up those loose ends and they've got a district championship on the line tonight Ben yep. that's right Emily very good uh, information uh, just to let you know they started off the season 35 7 against Delaware Valley Beat a tough Madison County team the next week, 29-7. Then they had two consecutive shutouts, JP2 and Ware County. Then uh, we had Friday Night Rivals on a Monday night. Played Leon, beat them 59-7 before that uh, loss versus Gadsden County last week. So, you know, they're looking to uh, change some things up and get back on uh, the winning road, Eric. Yeah, it, it's... Uh we both saw that score last week, and we were like, oh, mm -hmm. oh okay. Um, having not seen Gadsden County in person yet, um, so certainly it's a rebound opportunity here for Lincoln. And, you know, the other side of that, it, for Childs, they're, they're just trying to get off the schneid as it uh, is. And um, they were able to get some things going offensively last week, didn't translate into a victory, but typically – with a Childs team, if they put 27 points on the board like they did against Florida High last week, you'd see them come away with a win the way their defense plays. So um, it'll be interesting to see if they can carry over the offensive success they had last week against Florida High into this game uh, against Lincoln here tonight. Yeah, last week against Florida High, they, they took the lead 7-0 then gave up 17 unanswered points before the offense started generating some more uh, points. They ultimately lost that game 37-27 against Florida High. Um, you know, we've seen them three times this season, and the defense has looked really good. The offense uh, kind of, yeah, I mean, the running, well, game, the running game has looked good. The passing game just uh, hasn't kind of clicked yet uh, from what and, we've seen. And normally in a game like this with Childs against Lincoln, I would say this is, this is that game where if you're Childs, use Jalen Jones, use that mm -hmm. ground game, grind out some <laughs> possessions, wear down the clock, and, and try to limit – Lincoln's opportunities that way but at some point they're going to have to put the ball in the air and that's where they've been getting themselves in trouble in the games that we've seen turnovers uh, coming out of that quarterback spot and they're going to have to avoid that if they're going to beat Lincoln here tonight so Charles won the coin toss they've deferred to the second half so Liam Delaney about to kick the ball off our first shoe box kickoff of the evening got a couple of Trojans back to return Trying to get numbers. One of them is uh, Caber and Paul. 
Here's the shoe box kickoff. The shoe box home of the happy feet. Can we field it at the two yard line? Brought out to the 20. Nice move. Cuts back. Heading to the 30 yard line. Still on his feet. Still carrying the tackler. Getting all the way about to the 35 yard line. That's where Lincoln will set up shop for their first possession of tonight's ball game. That was a good look at Caber and Paul. And here's the look at the Consolidated Dispatch Agency starting lineups for the Lincoln Trojans offense and the Childs Timberwolves defense. For Lincoln, Sims Jr., Huggins, Paul, Maddox, Cornegay, Tawny, Wilmer, Sam, Roberts, Betsy, and Jones. And for the Timberwolves defense, Strozier, Trotman, Montez. We got Alex Asantez, but that's actually going to be Bryson Floyd. Uh, Mason McCants, Holton Harris, Malachi Mitchell, Emerson McNeely, Blanton Revel, and LaShawn Douglas, our scholar athlete for tonight's ball game. So first and 10 penalty on, on the called on that kickoff. So balls out to the tw back to the 20 first and 10 handoff to Higgins and falls down for a loss of a yard. That's TD Huggins. I, I couldn't tell if somebody from Childs got a piece of there if it was just a trip in the backfield, but it was either way. It was penetration there by Childs that uh, caused that even if he wasn't touched back there. He was trying to dance around and get around defenders. So. So second and 11. Paul's in motion. Sims trying to get to Tawny. Tawny catches the ball, falls across for a gain of about 14 on the play and a first down for Lincoln Trojans. Concentration there by Tawny. Ball went off his hands initially, but he was able to haul that in and then hang on to it as he's getting hit, which is maybe the tougher part of that catch. First and 10, Sims hands off to Huggins. Huggins gets around the edge, but dives across, getting close to the original line of scrimmage. You mentioned Bryson Floyd in the starting lineups there. They, they like to bring him on the late blitz. We saw that on the last play. He almost got home on that one. Keep an eye on that throughout the course of the night when Sims does those deep dropbacks. Floyd coming late on the blitz from that inside linebacker spot. Floyd is the tackling machine. Uh, got slowed down, missed a game for a broken hand, but uh, came back and hasn't missed a beat. Second down, Sims feeling pressure. Floyd dives at him, makes the tackle, but uh, Sims able to get a gain of about nine on the play. Talked about in the opening, Sims the leading rusher on this team from that quarterback spot. They've got Floyd on that play uh, mirroring him. And he ends up making a great tackle there as Sims was trying to get around the corner on him. Third and one for Lincoln. Corner game motion. Sims going to hand the ball off to Huggins. Huggins gets around the left side, still on his feet, gets past midfield, falls across to the Child's 46-yard line. Another Anderson and Hart first down for the Lincoln Trojans. Child's brought both inside linebackers inside on a blitz. There was nobody left outside, a lot of room there on the run. Defensive end crashed down, and that was an easy block for the left tackle. First and 10, Huggins with the carry. Gain of about a yard. Trent Strozier helps bring him down. Huggins trots off the field. Handoff. Bryson Floyd getting into the backfield, making the stop. Now this time Gerard McDaniel takes the handoff, and you're right, Floyd makes the, the tackle. Going to bring up a third and long for Lincoln. Four receivers, one back for the Trojans. Sims looking downfield, sees receiver, hits receiver. Receiver goes down about uh, four yards shy of the first down. Malachi Mitchell on the coverage there and the stop. So Lincoln bringing on the punt team. Thomas Arnold out to kick this one away. Arnold 
Kick heading toward the end zone. It will drop and Lincoln is going to do a great job. Ball down to about the one yard line. Huge play for the Trojan special teams. Credit Connor Copeland. And of course, Thomas Arnold with the beautiful punt. All right, let's go ahead and get a look at the consolidated dispatch agency starting lineups for the Childs Timberwolves offense. Taylor Jacobs, Jeremiah Cadet, Gerald Clark, Thomas Matthews, Cade Fryer, Trevor Jacobs, Sam Farmer, Mason Roden, Wade Bryce, Mikhail Lundy, and David Herring. For the Trojans defense, Quinn Gray Jr., Kendrick Scott, Ashton Chaney, Chancey Jordan, Gavin James, Chauncey Warren, Ahmad Green, K.J. Arnold, Tyler Howard, Caden Irving, and P.J. Davis. Well, I tell you what, you look at those defensive stats for the Trojans defense. Stellar. First and 10. We've got a handoff. Back dives through the line. That's him a little bit of breathing, rude, uh, breathing room. That was Cadet on the carry. I love what we've seen this year from the Childs running game. You know, they got they got three backs. They they uh, they all have, have got great numbers on the season. Uh, and of course, the quarterback, Taylor Jacobs, Jr. can use his legs to escape as well. Sank it down and seven. Another handoff. That's Jones. Jones gets across to about the seven yard line. Jalen Jones, their leading ball carry around the season 466 yards 6.1 yards per carry those three options you mentioned cadet averaging 5.6 he's the lowest one on the totem pole as far as yards per carry third and five tackle for loss Chancey Jordan with the big play, knocking uh, Jalen Jones back for a loss of a couple. Going to bring up a fourth down ball about at the one and a half yard line. Looks like you're taking a bit of a chance there. Six yard line, pitching wide mm -hmm. on a play that's going to take a while to develop. And it just feels like you give yourselves a lot more opportunities to have exactly what happened be the end result there. Punt. Nice elevation. Going to be fielded about the 45-yard line. Actually, it's muffed, but it's picked up. And tackle made about the 46-yard line. So Lincoln yeah. got a huge break there. Speaking huge of breaks, break. we got to take one. 5.55 to go in the first quarter. No score from Gene Cox Stadium in Tallahassee, Florida. Friday Night Rivals, Tallahassee CW. Closed captioning for tonight's game is brought to you by Awards For You. Encourage, recognize, celebrate. Back with you on Friday Night Rivals from Gene Cox Stadium in Tallahassee, Florida. Lincoln Trojans about to have their second possession of this ball game. With time it's flown by already in this first quarter, 5.55 to go. First drive resulted in a punt. Wound up pinning Childs deep in their own territory, forced a four and out. First down, hand off. Huggins scrambles and brought down you know, about five on that play. Bryson Floyd once again on a tackle. Mason McCants had a shot at him and a shot to drop him for a loss there, but couldn't make the tackle. But then he ends up breaking two more tackles before finally brought down. I think there were four guys in on that stop. Emerson McNeely also. Second down, Sims dropped in the backfield. This time they do wrap him up for a loss. Trent Strozier, good penetration, gets in there and really just kind of smothers him. Strozier, the big guy, said, you're not going to break this tackle. Mm -hmm. Yep. Bull rush, drove his guy into the backfield and just met the ball carrier there. Third and 10 for the Trojans and... Got some motion here on the line of scrimmage flag comes out. Well, I think they're going to get Strozier for offsides. Although we'll see if they say he was drawn off. 
I think Lincoln might have been given Childs a taste of their own medicine with the offensive lineman going into a kind of standing up to go from a two point. Now they do call him for false start. I thought maybe we were going to see Childs usually draws three or four offsides penalties with their offensive line going from with a real quick motion from the two point to the three point stance in unison. And I thought maybe Lincoln had done that to Childs this time. Leave it to you to defend the offensive lineman third and of course 14 for Lincoln deep ball incomplete. Not sure if the receiver saw the ball. Well, in our academic performer of the week, LaShawn Douglas, I, I think made a very smart play there. He initially, it looked like he was thinking about stepping in front of that one. But it's third down. You don't need to pick that one off. Let him punt. Arnold punting the ball away. This one, fair caught. Oh, the ball's out. I take it back. <laughs> I think Lincoln might have that. Let's see what the officials have to tell us. Well, Lincoln's not pointing. Oh they, oh, they do, though. Well, hold on. The officials are sorting this out. Who are they? Lincoln wasn't pointing, but Lincoln's pointing yeah. now. Officials pointing now. Lincoln recovery on the muff punt. Let's get a look at this. Oh, maybe he should have intercepted that one. then. <laughs> Great job by Lincoln getting down, covering that ball up. Hard to tell who the Trojan was that came out of that pile. Result is the ball is now we placed inside the 20, so we're definitely, well, hold on, let's see. Yeah, we're inside the Esposito's Lawn and Garden Center red zone. Ball going to be at the 18-yard line, first and 10 for the Trojans from there. And off to Huggins. Not able to get very much. Yeah, it was a good job there by Jordan Lewis. And also in on the stop was LaShawn Douglas. Talked about it before the game. Turnovers. I, and I wasn't specifically talking about special teams miscues, but certainly you can't give the ball to Lincoln inside the 20 uh, in that red zone and hope to have success throughout the course of the night. Second and 10, touchdown Trojans. 18 yard pass, Christian Sims to Makai Maddox. On the slant. On the slant. Here's another look at it. Play action, Sims. Yeah. No deep help there. Doesn't take much. Arnold get open point. on the slant when there's no deep help on top. Extra point up and good. Your score, Lincoln seven. Child zero. 355 to go in the first quarter. It's Friday Night Rivals on Tallahassee CW. Eric, you know who the NXT Champion is. I don't have the slightest idea, Ben. Trick Williams. Just and now that you've said it, I don't have the slightest idea, Ben. Just won the title a couple weeks ago against Obi Femi. I don't know who any of those people are. Well, they know who you are. They talk about you all the time. I, but... I seriously doubt it. <laughs> so the Trojans heading this ball game seven nothing. Christian Sims to Makai Maddox, 18 yard touchdown. Thomas Arnold getting ready to kick this ball away. Thomas Matthews, Cade Fryer back deep to return. No need for a return. That ball goes into the end zone for a touchback. This will be the Timberwolves' second offensive possession of this ball game. The first one, they were pinned back deep. Went three and out. Taylor Jacobs. Jalen Jones in the backfield, four receivers. There it is. Ooh, there it is. And there it is. And offside call against the Trojans. 
interestingly, and I have no idea whether this is accurate or not, but it almost looked like Lincoln was trying to get one of them to move with right. that shift, shift. Yep, yep. that shift in unison there. So first and five. Jacobs trying to get the ball to his brother Trevor. Not able to make that connection second and five. Left hander just threw a little bit too much on that one, a little bit high. Well, Trevor's not, he's a, on the small side. Got up in the air as much as he could, stretched out as much as he could. That's an awfully tough one to haul in. Second and five. Jalen Jones takes the ball, gets through the line, and falls ahead for Got it. Childs Timberwolves first down. They're Childs first, Anderson and Hart first down of the evening. Anderson and Hart, because you matter. Good luck. It's blocking there by the line. No need to measure on those when it's uh, following a touchback. That's right. <laughs> First and 10 from the 30 yard line. Two backs now in the backfield. That's Jones and Cadet. Jones will take the carry, trying to get around the left side and gets ahead for a couple. It's out of bounds, out of clock, stop the clock. Cadet a much smaller back than Jones. Cadet 27 carries, 151 yards. He's an effective inside runner. He is, yeah. Despite that size. So I like having the two of them in there because you might get a team to think, okay, you know, they're going to, little guy going to run outside, big guy going to run inside. The big guy just ran outside there in Jalen Jones, and they're not scared to give Cadet that ball and let him go inside. And he's effective at it. One back, three receivers to the right side and a triangle, one on the left side. Hand off to Jones. Falls ahead for another two yards on the play. That was almost a fumble on the exchange there between Jacobs and Jones, but Jones was able to get it. I don't I think Jacobs was further away from Jones than he thought he was going to be, and he stuck that ball out there and just barely got it into the gut of Jalen Jones. So Child's fortunate there to not have a fumble. Third and five for the Timberwolves. Ball at their own 35-yard line. Jacobs. Nothing doing. Trying to see who took the handoff there. That was Cadet. No, I'm sorry, that was Trevor Jacobs. He went down quickly, so didn't get a good look at him before uh, he had a couple of uh, Kedrick Scott and company on yeah, top of him. Lincoln had a blitz going on that, and they were just, you see there four or five guys in the backfield as that handoff's being made. And I don't know that Taylor Jacobs had an option on that, if that's just a straight handoff or if that's some kind of option that he's got there but Ooh. so a fair catch was called so no return Holton Harris is just gonna keep running though but going back to what I was saying there if that play is a read option for Taylor Jacobs you, you might bust a big one there in that mm -hmm. case because everybody was converging on Trevor in that backfield but again I don't think it was a read option I think that was just a straight handoff mm -hmm. So flag down on the field this. Uh... If I'm Childs, though, I might come back to that one later on. If I've got a keeper off of that same play, I might come back to that later on when I think that Lincoln's about to dial up that same blitz again. So they'll call delay of game. That was on Tyler Howard, the returner. Motion for a fair catch and then took off with the ball. Like he forgot about it or something. So that's delay I'll march it back five yards 
So Lincoln will start this drive at their own 35 yard line. Sims feeling some pressure and brought down for a big sack. Hunter Trotman's going to get credit for the sack there, but that play was actually made by Landon Crisofoli on the blitz from the inside linebacker spot. He pressured Sims. Sims didn't have a pocket to step up into, so he tried to go outside, and that's where Trotman was able to get a hold of him. Chris Foley has the third most tackles on this team. That one big, let's see, loss of nine on the play. Second and 19. Sims fires, hits the ball, hits the, that's Paul. Paul gets close to, very close to the Just first shot. down, yeah. Kind of as he got tackled, Paul kind of sat down and the ball didn't go forward as he went down. And I think that's why he wasn't able to get across that line. Third and short, quick pass to Maddox. Maddox catches, gets across. Good enough for a two yard gain and a Trojans first down. Four receivers, one back for the Trojans. That back is Jared McDaniel. Paul in motion. Sims, McDaniel, big hole, oh, across the 50, brought down by, let's see, that's uh, number 16, that's Blanton Revel, but not before he was able to get about seven yards on that play. Huge hole to run through there, Eric. Was, that's a, and that's gonna be the last play of the quarter. I, and I'll say this before we step aside. It's interesting, they had so much trouble in the early going with getting Lincoln players to the ground, but we've seen some great solo tackles yep. here just in this drive by Child's players. Well, that is the end of the first quarter. We'll go ahead and send it to break. 7-0 Lincoln over Child's. It's the Bear No Heating and Air Friday Night Rivals presented by Consolidated Dispatch Agency. Welcome back to Gene Cox Stadium, Tallahassee, Florida. Lincoln versus Childs. Lincoln coming to this ball game with a record of five and one. Childs at one and five. Childs heading this one. Seven nothing with the ball just past midfield, actually at the 54 yard line. Second and two. I mean, 44, I should say, or 46. <laughs> Sims fakes the handoff, looking downfield, has a receiver open. It is caught. Touchdown, child. <laughs> the Trojans. Mark that as a 46 yard catch. Cabrin Paul from Christian Sims Jr. Get a good look. Great protection. Receiver had a couple steps on his defender. And just like that, another Weston Traywood touchdown. Well, that's one Trojans. where your receiver is and where your defensive back is. You've got a lot of room to miss that one inside and let the receiver adjust to it. And that's exactly what Sims did. Extra point up and good. Lincoln ahead in this one now 14 nothing. As you look at the replay, great pocket for him to throw from. Pass a little bit behind Paul. He's able to make the adjustment. Great job getting downfield and beating his defender. That's two touchdowns so far tonight for Christian Sims Jr. Had an 18 yarder to Makai Maddox earlier in the first quarter. And then the 46 yarder there to Abram Paul. Arnold getting ready to kick off. Another strong kick into the end zone for a touchback. So we mentioned how well Childs has done this year running the ball, but you get down 14 nothing early. Temptation might be there to try to air it out a little bit more, but uh, 
Timberwolves and their fans need to be a little patient here. Don't you think, Eric? Yeah, it's 14 nothing. You've had some success running the football. You are, again, I said it before the game, they're going to have to throw it at some point, but I don't think you have to get into a mode where you're throwing every down in an effort to try to play catch up here. Uh, you're, you're two good drives and a stop away from being right back in this game. Of course, that's not going to help when you have a bad snap right out of the yeah. gate there on the first play of the drive. Jacob's able to dive on top of it and recover it, but uh, still looking at about a nine yard loss on that bad snap. But low. So second and long for Childs. Now you really put yourself into a situation where you're either a draw play or putting the ball in the air. Jacobs tackle for loss. Corey Wiley doing a great job tackling the receiver. Yep, nothing doing there. So ball now about the 11 yard line, actually closer to the 10. So loss of a couple on that play. Bring up a third and 20 to go. In the second quarter. It's Jones in the backfield. Fake the handoff. Jacobs hit for a loss. So that fumbled snap on the first play just kind of takes away so much of what you can try to do offensively in that situation. Loss of three on the play for Jacobs and bring up a fourth down. Punting unit on the field. Dangerous Tyler Howard back to return this punt. He'll field it at his own 41 yard line. Heads to the right. And dives across to about the 27. That's where Lincoln will start things out on this in their next drive. And timeout on the field. We'll go ahead and send it to break. 9.44 to go in the second quarter. Your score, Lincoln, 14, child zero. It's the Friday Night Rivals on Tallahassee CW. Welcome back to Gene Cox Stadium in Tallahassee, Florida. Lincoln currently leads Childs 14 to zero. And the band is playing, getting us all ready to go back onto the football field. And speaking of... Uh, last week, a very special thing happened to a Leon County school. Not here tonight, but Godby High School. They were gifted $140,000 by superintendent. And he said that it was the first of many. They got all of the money for new band equipment, for new uniforms. They didn't have any before. And the band director was moved to tears. He was just so overwhelmed uh, from emotion from this donation. And uh, I'm excited to see Godby High School sport in the new uniforms. We'll have to go out and see them. Uh, one of these one of these weeks, Ben. Yeah, thank you, Emily. And that's exciting for these uh, other Leon County schools that are also be getting funds to uh, get new uniforms through a band. So thank you so much. So the first uh, pass of that drive hit uh, trying to get Makai Maddox, just not able to make that completion. So second down and 10. TD Huggins in the backfield next to Christian Sims Jr. Sims. Going for that slant. That's incomplete. Trying to get that to, let's see, that's um, Malachi Acosta. Those numbers sometimes look like he was 10, number 10, but it's actually 18, so third and 10. After the incompletion. Sims. Pressure coming. That's Holton Harris not able to knock him down. We do have a flag down. Sims gets to the outside and dives ahead. Yeah, that's close to the back. stick. Yeah, it's going to be a hold on Lincoln. Here's the signal by the head referee. Let's see if we get a look at this hold. Yeah, it's on the left tackle. Had a handful of jersey and the defender tried to disengage and that's when you really will see that a lot of times. 
up until the point where the defender tries to get away, he's he's holding, but he's doing it within the frame of the body, and you, you're typically not going to get that call because they're just not going to see it. But once that defender tries to disengage, you've got to let him go. Otherwise, they're going to see the hands gripping the jersey. Third and 20 cents, feels the pressure, and it's hit for a loss and a big sack. Bryson Floyd once again making a play for the Childs Timberwolves. It's a heck of a defensive series by Childs after giving Lincoln tremendous field position. Great job by the pass rush. Jordell Lewis, J.D. Vincent pressuring Sims outside the pocket. Bryson Floyd able to Make that sack, so fourth down. Thomas Arnold comes out. Nice high punt, fair catch called, and another muff. Looks like Child's able to recover. Stay tuned for the Stubbs Roofing and Gutters Halftime Report. We'll have this week's Werner Hyundai and Werner Kia Scholar Athletes. We'll also talk with tonight's participating school administrators, plus Thursday Night Lights and Friday Night Rivals highlights from across the country. All coming up in the Stubbs Roofing and Gutters Halftime Report. Stubbs Roofing and Gutters, your shelter through the storm. The Childs will take over. First and 10 at their own seven-yard line. Two backs and fumbled snap. This this one was right in Jacob's yeah, that, hands. He's I, I think he's looking to make the handoff there before he's actually got the ball in his hands. And uh, just like a receiver trying to look to run before he actually secures the ball on a reception, same kind of concept there. Takes his eyes off the football, looking at that running back and can't safely handle that snap and again puts him in a bad position here back up against the goal line and into second and very long and yeah, loss of five ball now at the four yard line Jones takes the handoff good hold to run through falls across the five into about the six yard line so a gain of four on the play Child's defense has performed admirably tonight they've given up 14 points but again you go back Seven of those, one of those two touchdowns is off of a turnover inside the 20-yard line. So their defense is, has played very well against a very, very good opponent in Lincoln. That's what we've kind of seen in the, the, the three-plus games we've done with them uh, this year. The, the, the defense has uh, come through a lot. The offense just, uh, you know, has some challenges. So third and 11. That's Jalen Jones next to Taylor Jacobs. Jacobs. Steps up, brought down safety for the Lincoln Trojans. That's Chancey Jordan celebrating the sack and the safety. I, you know, you, you look at this play and you might think to yourself, hey, the quarterback can't take a sack in that situation. The quarterback doesn't have a chance in that situation. Uh, as quick as Chancey Jordan was to get into the backfield, there's really not a chance. Taylor Jacobs had just gotten back to where he's setting up, and then all of a sudden he looks up, and uh, right there is Chancey Jordan. So I, I don't think you can fault Taylor Jacobs Jr. on that one. Uh, again, ideally you don't want your quarterback taking the sack there, but I, I just don't think he had a chance really to do anything to scramble to get rid of the football or anything in that situation. 16 nothing Trojans, 7.09 to go in the second quarter. Childs will kick the ball off from their own 20. Liam Delaney getting ready to kick this one. And over end, a little bit uh, short and fielded about the 34 yard line. To the other side and around. He's getting far downfield, folks. They're not going to catch him. No, it's coming back. It's going to be a hold on Lincoln. Caber Paul celebrating, but he does not see the flag down. 
Well, and, and the problem here is I, I don't know that this hold was really one that they needed to commit in order to score this touchdown. And, and I we'll see if we see it on the replay and if we get it on the replay, you'll you'll see what I mean on this. I, I don't think it was needed in order to score, but it was a pretty obvious hold. It'll look right there at the 30 yard line backing oh, up backing up. Really? I, I, yeah, I just you, you uh, don't need to hold in that situation and no. you cost your team a touchdown. <laughs> You're in a good position blocking the guy he's backpedaling once he starts to try to get away from you. The runners are already by let him go. Let him go. Good news is that it's a spot foul. Right. So uh, so Lincoln's still going to get the ball at the 25-yard line. Sims feeling the pressure and brought down. Landon Crisofoli there, good blitz. During the fourth quarter of tonight's game, we'll be selecting the Barano Heating and Air player of the game. Barano Heating and Air, we will always be there for you. Yeah, huge. I mean, that, Leon needed that, that sack big time there. Landon Crisofoli coming up big. Loss of about nine on the play, second down. Sims, pressure coming, escapes for now. Spin move. Bryson Floyd brings him down, but uh, Sims able to get a couple yards on that, but dandy job of escaping the pressure. Bill Reagan's the head coach, also acts as the defensive coordinator for this team, really bringing the pressure here in this series. Hard count there for Sims. Now he's going to do a check with me. Trying to see if they can draw Childs off sides. They don't. He'll get the play from the sideline now. Plenty of time on the play clock at 11 seconds. Third and 18. Sims. Pressure once again. Avoids it. Flag down. Sims gets all the way out to the 25. That'll bring up a fourth and 10. But let's see what this flag is. I think it's going to be a hold on Lincoln. All right, so 10 yard penalty. Well, your choices there are fourth and 10 at the 25. Is Lincoln going to go for it in that situation or not? They go ahead and take the penalty and make it third and about 22. Sims with the pressure. Maddox with the catch, escapes a little bit. You know, that one worked out in Child's favor, definitely. Five-yard gain to Makai Maddox, fourth and long. And they're going to trust the foot of Thomas Arnold to try to pin the Timberwolves deep. It's worked quite quite well for them. Nobody back for Child's. End over end. Ball hits and. Great job once again by the Lincoln special teams. Ball down at the one yard line. I don't know if Charles purposely didn't put somebody back or if they didn't have enough guys on the field. They weren't lined up when that ball was snapped. And they just kind of gave them free reign to get down there and cover that punt and down it at the one like they did. We'll send it to break. Friday Night Rivals on Tallahassee CW. 16-0 Lincoln over Childs here at Gene Cox Stadium in Tallahassee, Florida. Near the conclusion of tonight's game, we'll be selecting the Bear No Heating and Air play of the game. Bear No Heating and Air, we will always be there for you. Still have a lot of plays left before we can designate one. We've seen a couple of Christian Sims touchdown passes. Chancey Jordan sack in the end zone for a safety. That's where we're at now, 16-0. And once again, Child starting deep in their own territory at their own one-yard line. And 
There it is, and offsides again after a shift by the Lincoln defensive line as they react then to Childs going down into their three-point stances. Precious yards that, uh, that Childs definitely needed there. So the ball now out to their own six-yard line to be first and five. That's Jalen Jones in the backfield next to Taylor Jacobs Jr. And, and give themselves a first down with back-to-back -back offsides penalties by Lincoln. That is huge. Was that three they've gotten so far? Yes. In this ball game, yeah. Last time I checked, five plus five equals ten. So that's how I know that's a first down. <laughs> no measurement needed in that situation. Nope. Right? Ball now at the child's 11-yard line. Well, you got a first down and got yourself more room without snapping the football. Jones and Cadet in the backfield on either side of Taylor Jacobs Jr. There's the snap. Nice. Jacobs escaping the rush. Tries to make the defender miss, but not able to. Going to be knocked back for a loss. It originally, when he got when he navigated his way through that pocket as it was collapsing, it looked like he was going to have a lot of room to run, but Tyler Howard closed that down very quickly. Coming up from that defensive back position. That's a good play by Howard against a very effective runner in Taylor Jacobs Jr. Loss of two on the play. High snap. Touchdown. Trojans. Jacobs not able to get possession of the ball. Instead, Nick Sebeski able to fall on it for a touchdown for the defense. And there it is. High snap. Well, and in that case, Taylor Jacobs, you, you just have to fall on the ball. You, you have to understand they're right there behind you. Fall on the ball. Two is much better than seven in that situation. So Sebeski with the fumble recovery in the end zone. Extra point up and good. Your score, Lincoln, 23, child zero. 3.52 to go in this first half. Stay tuned for the Stubbs Roofing and Gutters Halftime Report. We'll have this week's Werner Hyundai and Werner Kia Scholar Athletes. We'll also talk with tonight's participating school administrators, plus Thursday Night Lights and Friday Night Rivals highlights from across the country, all coming up in the Stubbs Roofing and Gutters Halftime Report. Stubbs Roofing and Gutters, your shelter through the storm. So two offensive scores for, uh, for Lincoln and now two defensive scores. And Arnold's kickoff. Once again into the end zone for a touchback. Good news for Childs is they're not starting <laughs> at the one. At the one, like the the one, the two, you know, the, the Thomas Arnold punts have have uh, been effective. Well, it, it, it doesn't matter if you start at the one, the five, the 10, the 20, or the other 10. If you can't get a snap from the center to the quarterback, it's yep. not really going to matter what you do or where the ball is. Yep. That's true. And that has been a huge, huge problem tonight for uh, Childs. So 350 to, 3.52 to go in this first half. We've got a... Timberwolf coming a little bit late on the field. Did not have a right guard there, but now they do. First and 10. Pass caught. Trevor Jacobs brought down ooh, a little bit high. Yeah, they're going to get 15 more on the end of that one for that tackle. They're going to call unnecessary roughness, I think, there on Lincoln. Seven yard pass completion to Jacobs. And the officials will talk this over. Nope, they oh. picked it up. 
So he's saying no face mask. Let's get a look at this. Yeah, it's more like a, a clothesline. Played good for seven, second, and three. High snap. Jones with the carry. Ahead for a first down for Childs Timberwolves. That time Jacobs did a good job not only getting the high snap, but getting that immediately into the gut of Jalen Jones as he came by for the handoff. That run good for four yards. And the Timberwolves first down. Not only was that snap high, it was also to the right. So Jacobs kind of had to turn his shoulders away from Jalen Jones and then get his body back into the position to make that handoff. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. And Jalen Jones is your back. Quick hitter, pass caught to Cade Fryer. Fryer dives ahead for a gain of about five on the play. Clock continues to roll. Two and a half minutes to go in this first half. Jacobs. Pass caught, Fryer again, and it's like that'll be good enough for a six yard gain and another Timberwolves first down. The other games we've had for Childs so far this season, as we had them against Wakulla and then Rickards and Godby, doesn't feel like they really targeted Cade Fryer that much. So we didn't really get to see him do much offensively, but tonight now we've seen a couple of plays in a row go to him. Now coming into this ball game tonight, 14 catches, 161 yards, and three touchdowns. But you're right, I think those have all kind of a lot of that has happened in, in games we haven't done of theirs. Ball at the 44, first and 10. Jacobs, Fryer, third straight completion. That one good for eight yards, and a flag comes out after the play on the sideline. Late hit on Lincoln. I... Yeah, I would think that's that would be. But let's do what the officials have to tell us. Snap that was a little high-ish. Pryor looks like he's feeling the effects of that tackle. Yep. Do get him for the late hit out of bounds. That's a pretty big penalty for Childs there. Talked about it earlier about how well their defense is played, though you might not get that impression with a 23 to nothing score, but this is much needed time for them to be off the field here, too. And if you're Childs, if you can time this one and get down to the goal line and score and put seven on the board without your defense having to come back out this half and then just take it to the locker room, I think getting the ball first, you might be able to get a little momentum on your side and maybe get back in this one from the 33 yard line first and 10 Jacobs pass completes about the 25 yard line good for eight yards that's uh, Matthews on the catch good job Matthews. Thomas Matthews little hitch there sit down in between defenders in that zone by Lincoln Just over a minute to go in this first half. Ball now spotted at the 26-yard line of Lincoln. Second and two. Jacobs, pass, caught. Out of bounds goes Cade Fryer for another child's first down. That one was close to being a hit out of bounds as well. Play good for four yards. Probably could have thrown the flag there, too. Briars really gimpy right now. Ball at the Lincoln 22 yard line.
Jacobs brought down all the way back at the 35 yard line. He's going to have to come out for a play too. Helmet came off. Might be hurt as well. Quinn Gray Jr. and Ashton Cheney helped bring him down. Flag came out as well. That's going to be on. They call Lincoln for face mask. Now defensive hold. All right, so let's see where they're going to spot this one. Jacobs looks like he's limping a little bit on that left leg. The ball is going to be inside the Esposito's Lawn and Garden Center red zone. Now at the Lincoln 10 yard line. Guess they didn't make Jacobs come out. I guess not. The helmet came off. Jacobs, Fryer, and loss of about a yard on the play. Clock continues to tick. Got to call a timeout here if your child's. They do. That's their first time out of the half, so they've still got two left. So by far the best drive we've seen by the Timberwolves tonight. Effective quick passes yep. featuring Cade Fryer. And doing it really without the threat of the running game here, just yep. because of the clock situation. You, if you're Lincoln, you're not thinking they're going to run the ball too much because you just can't afford that time in the two-minute drill. So again, something positive that Childs can build off of in the locker room at halftime, especially if they, now they've got to finish the drive. I, I think if you drive like this, get down there, can't turn that into a score, I, you know, that, that's going to be a tough pill to swallow if you're Childs. But certainly if you get down here, you get a touchdown, uh, you pull within two scores, granted you'd need two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. But again, you get the ball first in the second half. So uh, I think there's some things that you could go into the locker room with at that point and be pretty pleased with how the half ended and, and really know that this game could be a lot worse were it not for your defense. I, I still, I think Child's defense has played excellent tonight. Second and 11 for the Timberwolves. Or Handoff this time to Cadet. Cadet making the carry, dives ahead to about the two yard line. We're going to call another timeout here. And again, we've talked about Cadet, smallish running back, but very effective inside runner. Nice job by the offensive line up front, blocking for him, gets through that hole and gets right down inside the five and down near the goal line here. Another timeout by Childs. They still have one. So it's going to be third and very short. About a 10 yard gain there for Cadet. 26 seconds to go in this first half. That play blocked very well by the O line. Beautiful evening here in Tallahassee. 67 degrees, Eric. I woke up this morning about 5 o'clock, went outside. 53 degrees. What say you? October 11? I'm, I'm down with it. You're thinking fall. Well, I, I think we're going to have uh, a couple of days of fake fall. It's going to warm up a little bit. Then next week, I think we're uh, we're going to officially be into it. So still calling fake fall. Faux fall? Just because I'm jaded like that. Faux fall? I say it's. I am. I am a curmudgeon. I say and it's faux show fall. <laughs> it's gonna. It's gonna stay. Third and short. Jones coming up field, diving ahead. It's going to be short of the goal line. They need to get up. Oh, well, they've got a timeout still. They haven't called it yet. Okay, I guess they have now. Okay. So Sam Farmer, offensive lineman, tried to jump in there behind Jones and shove him over the line. That's the popular thing these days. Oh. So it's fourth down. 
I mean, I guess it's a, it's a goal situation. I didn't realize it was goal, but there's no stick up to signify where the first down would be. So no, they call it timeout now. It's two seconds left. They're going to kick the field goal. <sighs> OK. <laughs> so close. Hagen Purdue. Like he's going to come out to. I don't think I realized it was fourth down here either. It, it's tough from this vantage point. The way the the way we're seeing the angle across the field, it was. I mean, to me, it didn't look like it was a goal goal to go situation. But a tease. Hagen Purdue. Snap. Kick is up. And good at the end of the half, your score linking 23, Childs 3. Emily Peters on the field with Lincoln head coach Jimmy Tyson. Go ahead, Emily. Coach, you told me earlier this week there were a lot of lessons to take from last week. Have you seen those adjustments on the field? Oh, uh, yeah. On defense, I think we're getting back to our brand of football. Um, being physical, we got a holding call, but you know, I, I'd rather that than be playing too soft. Um, and then on offense, we're getting back to our rhythm and our tempo. What's the message to keep the momentum up in the second half? Just do what we do. Um, I think, you know, we're doing a good job. We just got to be consistent and not get into the stupid penalties. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Coach Tyson. We'll go ahead and send it to break. When you come back, we'll have the Stubbs Roofing and Gutters Halftime Report. Have some fun things for you, and then we'll get you set up for the second half on Friday Night Rivals on Tallahassee CW. Hi, I'm Paul, General Manager of Warner Kia. We are proud to be part of this community, and we're proud to introduce the Scholar Athlete of the Week. This week's Scholar Athlete is Kevin Hale. Kevin has a 4.2 GPA and is a member of the varsity football team. He has played football all four years while maintaining over a 4.0 GPA and is a lifeguard for the city of Tallahassee. Congratulations, Kevin. Hi, my name is Kamar Edwards. I'm the new car sales manager here at Warner Hyundai. We're proud to be part of this community and we're proud to present the Scholar Athlete of the Week. This week's Scholar Athlete is LaShawn Douglas Hayes. LaShawn has a 3.98 GPA and is a four-year member of the varsity football team. He is also a two-time regional qualifier in weightlifting, competes in track and field, is dual enrolled, and volunteers in his free time. Congratulations, LaShawn. Welcome back to the Stubbs Roofing Halftime Report. I am now joined on the field with Child's Principal Joe Burgess, and this is your fourth time uh, yeah, yeah. doing this interview. Uh, and you've just been with Child's for a very long time. I know that it's a big part of you, and you're a big part of Child's, so just tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, 13 years here at the school, and of course, fourth time here on uh, TV, but it's also a great chance to see all the other schools. You know, it's almost like a family reunion where you get to see all the other schools. So tonight, taking on the Trojans, and uh, many years ago I was a feeder school principal for uh, Lincoln at Swift Creek Middle School so yeah it's just great to be back and uh, all the wonderful relationships you have across the county. And on the topic of Childs you guys have been a shelter now and, and pets am I right? Yes so we've been a pet shelter uh, we've been doing that for a long time uh, so we have staff that they uh, take it on to take on the community when they're in need and uh, for a lot of people they won't come to a shelter unless their pets can come so we put that to the side. I mean, we, we clean up afterwards, but we take in those pets because we want people to be safe. We want their families to be safe. And we take that on as our commitment to the community. So for those of you out there with pets wondering where to go, Childs High School is your spot. Uh, but tonight and just the rest of the season, it's a special time, especially for the seniors with the season wrapping up. Uh, just tell me a little bit about what these seniors mean to this program. Well, so first of all, it's great when you can uh, give your service and commitment to the school and they've sacrificed They've been through a lot over the four years, but they have uh, been tireless, committed. Uh, you know, they've kept their grades up. Um, but, you know, I will tell you as a principal, um, 
when they get the diploma uh, in May, it's not a transactional relationship. Actually, whenever they need us as they move forward, they can come back and call on us, right? So, uh, because we're always a part of them, and we want to thank them for everything that they've done. Also, I want to give a shout out to our band, to the cheerleaders, uh, to the dance team. All those different programs are out here will make the Friday night so special to our community. And uh, on the topic, of course, of uh, one big family and shout outs, I know you've got yours, so go ahead and give it to me. Well, <laughs> my wife, Shannon, uh, my boy, Micah, my girl, uh, Alana, and I want to give a shout out to my family from uh, Mount Pleasant um, who are out there in Gaston County. They've made me who I am, and I love them very much, and I appreciate you guys always giving me a chance to give them a shout out. Of course. Well, shout out to all you guys, and we'll be right back on the Stubbs Roofing Halftime Report. Stick around. I'm out here at Barano Heating and Air with Patrick. And Patrick, you guys have been involved with Friday Night Rivals since the beginning. Uh, what is it about this partnership that keeps you guys coming back? Yeah, I mean, anytime that we can be in front of uh, our local schools, local families, um, and, 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 and support what high school football brings to, to, a, to our community, it's a, it's a win-win. And, you know, us being a local company with local employees, we have kids that go to these schools, it's, it just makes perfect sense. Let's build on that a little bit, because I know as a parent, you have students in high school athletics. Uh, why is it important for the community to be involved? Yeah, so with most schools, you know, it, it's hard to, to raise all the money and funding that, that schools, uh, you know, need to support their, their uh, sports. And, you know, this is just a small way for us to give back to those schools. And let's talk about that local business aspect. Uh, why is that important for customers to know you guys have been in this community for a long time now? Yeah, so when you deal with local companies, uh, the owners are local, the employees are, are local, it keeps everything local so you know th there's a lot of options when, when it comes to, to air conditioning um, but th there's very few that are, are true Tallahassee local well thank you Patrick thank you I'm out here with David Odom at Consolidated Dispatch Agency. Now, David, what is Consolidated Dispatch Agency? Yes, ma'am. We are your 911 emergency communications center for the city of Tallahassee and for Leon County. And we are standing right now on the operations floor. It really does take a whole team here. Absolutely. It takes a, a group of dedicated individuals who have a servant's heart, who just want to serve this community and, and, and provide resources to this community when they are in need. And you guys are the first point of contact when people call 911. Tell me about the different partners then. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we are one of the partners here for the public safety in this community, and we work with the Leon County Sheriff's Office, City of Tallahassee Police Department, Leon County EMS, and the City of Tallahassee Fire Department. And it takes all of us as a team to provide the resources and to get out and try to help this community when they're in need. Yeah, and you mentioned community. It really is a community here, uh, but you guys are also very involved with the community, like Friday Night Rivals. Uh, why was that important? Yeah, it's important for us because not only do we serve this community, we're part of this community. We have our own staff members out of those Friday Night Football games, and we just enjoy being part of this community, being out and serving what we do. You guys serve this community. What can the community do to uh, get involved with your team? Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to have you come and visit with us and see how we do serve this community and, and be part of it and, and join our team. Love to have you. Well, thank you so much, David. Absolutely. We look forward to being part of Friday Night Rivals. Go team. Welcome back to the Stubbs Roofing Halftime Report. It is 23-2-3. Lincoln is leading Childs, and it's still halftime. We are currently down here on the field. This is the athletic director of Lincoln High School, Joe Valisi. And we just had some nice ambiance. It's stopped now, but the band just playing for us. And of course, this is a whole event for the school. Uh, what does it mean to the school, I guess, to have the band out, the cheerleaders, and just everyone out here? I mean, it's a great environment. You know, we're playing for a district championship. It's, uh, it's great to have everyone out here on a Friday night. Um, it's a city rivalry. It's, it's exciting. You mentioned the district, district rivalry, and, and this is a district championship. What does that mean for Lincoln to bring home this win? I mean, it's huge. It's, it's big implications for the playoffs and traveling. Uh, you know, whether you have to be on the road at the beginning of the season or being at home, I mean, uh, 
It makes a big difference. Yeah, it's huge. And it's kind of crazy that we're already talking about postseason and talking about playoff bids and whatnot. Uh, and for the seniors, of course, they are wrapping up their final season. What does it mean for them to be a part of the program and what do they bring? Well, it's and it's 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 banter back and forth across the city, and it's something that they'll have for the rest of their lives. I mean, most of them are friends, and it's 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 good talk. I mean, Special. we've had that their whole lives, and it's it's good fun. I mean, a hundred years ago when I was in school, we still talk back and forth about the wins we had or the losses we had, and we'll never forget that. So that's that's good fun. My producer in my ear just said 100, 100 well, years ago. It feels like 100 years, you know? I mean, you're probably 75 years younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> just about. Well, thank yeah. you, Mr. Belisi. Well, thank you for always, that. <laughs> always wonderful, and thank you for hosting us. And for all of you at home, stick around. More from the Stubbs Halftime Report coming, coming up next. Hi everyone, I'm out here at Stubbs Roofing with Cindy. And Cindy, when I think of this time of year, I immediately think of football season, but it's still storm season and it's really ramping up. So what reminders do you have for families? Yes, Emily, so star, star season has begun, and even though we haven't had uh, severe weather, we may still get some this year. Now is the perfect time to take advantage of our free inspections. Um, and it's important to have inspections done regularly um, to prevent any issues from be, um, causing major damage. Um, it's you know, important to make sure that our families are protected, that our roofs are secure in good conditions. Um, when we do come out, we are always transparent about what really needs to get done. And that is something that really sets you guys apart is the transparency with clients. Uh, tell me a little bit more about that. Yes, so we are completely honest with our clients. Um, we, you know, let them know if, you know, repairs are necessary or if, you know, it's time for a new roof. Um, but we don't just try to, you know, sell them a repair. And we understand that's more than a house. It's a home where, you know, families are growing together. And families are probably at home right now watching uh, Friday Night Rivals and so happy that you guys are participating this year. What inspired you guys to participate? Well, really, we just love to be part of the community to give back. Um, you know, the community has always supported us as a company, and so we just really want to give back to them. Well, thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Emily. On behalf of Barano Heating and Air Conditioning, we're proud to present this check to Lincoln High School for their academics and athletics. Welcome back to Gene Cox Stadium in Tallahassee, Florida. Ben Cinco, Eric Llewellyn with you. 23-3, Lincoln is leading this ball game. Childs is able to get a field goal right before the end of the half. Big old hunk of cheese on the screen there. Yes. Making me hungry. Is it bad that I see cheese there? Do we still say that about the moon? No, is that something from, like, my childhood? Right, well, that's true. I remember seeing or hearing about it back then, the, the green cheese kind of thing. Yeah, I don't think, uh, don't hear anybody refer to it as that anymore. It's the old guard like us that's holding on yeah. to it, and we need to pass the pass word that out on to, yes, the, pass to this on. generation. Okay. Thomas Arnold's shoe box kickoff. Going to sail into the end zone for a touchback. Emily Peters down on the sideline. Tell us what the Charles head coach Bill Reagans had to say to you. Yeah, Ben, I just caught up with him and he felt like the momentum started to shift there at the end of the first half and said, I wish that we could have got it in for a touchdown, but definitely felt like they ended it on a more positive note in the locker room. He said, he, we're not out of this as long as we don't shoot ourselves in the foot and, you know, the penalties in the first half, got to get rid of those and got to play a clean game. He also said Lincoln has had really good field position to this point. So that's something else that he wants to take into consideration. Uh, just clean some stuff up and get back out there and fight in the second half. All right, Emily, thank you very much. First and 10. Jalen Jones gets about a yard. If you're wondering about statistics, that boy Kellen gave us some information. Uh, Taylor Jacobs Jr., eight, eight out of nine, 36 yards. Uh, Jalen Jones, let's see, eight carries, 20 yards. And Caden Fryer, five catches. Or Cade Fryer, five catches, 22 yards. 
Most of that was on that last drive where they were so effective on those short, precise passes to to Fryer, getting them downfield. Ultimately led to that field goal. So second and nine. Jacobs. Fryer with the great grab and brought down in about a yard on the play. Well, in going back to what he was talking about there with the field position for Lincoln, even even with that, the child's defense has been so good tonight. Again, you, you kind of dissect that 23 points in the first half by Lincoln. Uh, you've got two off of a sack in the end zone for a safety, uh, seven off a fumbled snap in the end zone that was recovered by Lincoln. Seven more where they got the ball inside the red zone on the 18 yard line after a fumbled mm -hmm. punt. Mm -hmm. Only seven points of that really to me is on the child's defense giving up some sort of drive. Third and eight for Childs. Jacobs hits Jones out of the backfield, makes a move and gets a for a first down. Huge first down for the Timberwolves. Jones last week had a couple of grabs, uh, two catches, 60 yards, one receiving touchdown. Let's start featuring him a little more out of the backfield on passes. It's a throw. You just have to have the right amount of touch on it there. Had to get that over the defender, but you can't go too high over the defender because then you're going to airmail your receiver as well, the running back, Jones. It's our first Anderson and Hart first down of the second half. Jones hits in the backfield, going to be dropped for loss. And you've got three Lincoln players there. Not a chance for Jones on that one. Chancey Jordan do the celebration dance. Now a high school offensive line coach who now is a head coach has a state championship. He's at Berkeley Prep now, and he used to always say, your job, you've got to get that running back to the line of scrimmage on touch. And in that case, Jones has met three yards deep or two yards deep in the backfield. He, doesn't have a chance to really do anything. Second and 12. Jacobs feeling the pressure and he's going to be sacked. Five Trojans. Jordan dancing again. Ball now all the way back to the 22 yard line. It'll be third and 20 from there. It's a good look at the Pass rush. Taylor Jacobs is facing. Jacobs firing the ball downfield. And just a little too much on that one. Trying to get that to Trevor Jacobs. Incomplete fourth down. And the punting unit will come on for the Timberwolves. Liam Delaney comes on to punt the ball away. And I say this every time he's back there, the dangerous Tyler Howard back to return this one. Hasn't returned one for a touchdown this year, but has a great return average and returned two of them for touchdowns last season. A lot of air under this one. Fair catch call. The 39 yard line. We'll go ahead and send it to break. Your score. Lincoln 23, Childs 3. Bear No Heating and Air Friday Night Rivals presented by Consolidated Dispatch Agency. Closed captioning for tonight's game is brought to you by Awards For You. Encourage, recognize, celebrate. And the Lincoln Trojans take the field for their first offensive possession of the second half, leading this ball game 23 to 3 over Childs. Be first and 10 at their own 39 yard line. Christian Sims going to hand the ball off. That's Powell on the carry. About a five yard gain there for Gerard Powell. Or McDaniel, I should say. I'm calling him Powell. Gerard McDaniel, 37 carries, 247 yards, three touchdowns coming in tonight's ball game. Daniel on the carry again. Not nearly as successful this go around. Just a swarm of Timberwolves defenders there. 
Bryson Floyd and company. Making the tackle for loss. Third and eight. Sims pass caught to Tawny and Holton Harris. Nice play there by Holton Harris. Barry and Barbara, hope you're watching this. Well, the big tackle going to bring up a fourth down. Oh. Arnold. Oh, Leon had to hustle some people on the field there. Or Charles. I'm Charles, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ball start on. And Lincoln was Lincoln. not set, though. They were in such a hurry to snap the ball to try to take advantage of that for Childs that they didn't get everybody set there. Arnold's punt. Lincoln wisely grabs it before it could fall back any further. Childs will take over at their own 34-yard line. And again, that child's defense. All right, we'll go ahead and take a break. There's a water break on the field there. Hold that thought. You can address that when we come back. 6.51 to go in the third quarter. Lincoln 23, child's three. First and 10 for the Timberwolves. Jacobs has some time. Pass caught. Completed to Trevor Jacobs right about the first down marker. And 10 yards, first down, Timberwolves. Nice job. Taylor Jacobs had a streak of about 10 balls in a row of completions until the last, uh, until the incompletion on that last drive, and just uh, maybe he's going to start another streak right there. Ball now at the 45 yard line of Childs. Yeah, well, well, yep, they're going to call. It's going to be an offsides on Lincoln. I believe that's number four for them on the evening. Seven seconds on the play clock. Pass trying to get the cadet out of the backfield incomplete. They got jinxed in there. Talking yeah, about I think streak. he just hurried that one a little bit. That's what it looked like to me. Everything was hurried about that. Yeah. And it took extra time getting the play in from the sideline and barely got the snap off before the delay game call. During the fourth quarter of tonight's game, we'll be selecting the Barano Heating and Air player of the game. Barano Heating and Air will always be there for you. Handoff, Jones. Mark it a gain of two. Lincoln saying they have the ball, but whistle blown. They blew that dead on forward progress, and then the ball was ripped out after the whistle blew. Here we look and see if Kendrick Scott has a point. There's Kendrick Scott trying to pull it out. Ball is out. But, yep, you know, on the field they called it. Forward progress. Third and four. Jacobs, quick hitter to Fryer. Oh, tackled up high. That's a obvious face mask there. And that one feels like Cade Fryer's lucky he's not hurt. That's the second. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the second time he's drawn a personal foul call. It's not only the, the motion that the net goes through there, but it's also that helmet, the way it turned on his head and having the side of that come over and catch your nose. We're marking the ball at the Lincoln 30 yard line. I think they're going to change that. 
Yeah, I was thinking so. Back it up two yards to the 32. Still doesn't seem right to me. Well, would have been a 15-yard penalty, right? Mm -hmm. But not from the spot. Yeah, so Jones on the carry. About a yard. A lineman with the helmet off. Gonna have to head on out. David Herring. Good number though. 77. I think he's playing center. He is. So your starters having snapping problems. Now you gotta bring somebody in for at least a play. Uh, second and nine. All at the Lincoln 30 yard line. And a little off snap off of oh -hoo -hoo. They're hitting down there. Pryor takes a hit. Pass incomplete. Snap was off the mark a little bit. Good job by Jacobs. Able to pull that in. Fire the ball. Hearing his return. Third and nine from just outside the 30 yard line. Three seconds on the play clock. Jacobs. Pass complete. That's Cadet out of the backfield. And a couple yards shy of the first down. Jacobs was moving before the snap there. Mm -hmm. Notice that as well. You're down 20. Late in the third, you've got to go for this here, especially at the 24 yard line. Fourth and a long two. Three seconds on the play clock. They're trying to get him to jump offside again. Timeout, Childs. Later in tonight's game, we'll be showcasing the Consolidated Dispatch Agency drive of the game. Consolidated Dispatch Agency service to others. Don't forget, we'll be with you next Friday night. Florida High hosting Madison County. That should be a dandy ball game. Florida High playing their first home game of the season after some renovations being done at their home field. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Just a short drive from my house. Looking forward to a little oh, golf course right over. To that. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, that should be a good game. Madison County is always tough, and Florida High is really clicking now. They play, uh, they, they play Gaston County tonight, so I'm wondering how that thing's going. I'll have to check on that one. So fourth and a long two. Ball at the Lincoln 24-yard line. Two backs, three receivers. Jacobs, no one there to hand the ball off to. He takes it and takes a loss. Didn't look like they were on the... On the same page, no, there, Eric. No, not at all. Jacobs is looking to hand that off to, uh, I believe it was to uh, Cadet, and Cadet's running into the line, not looking for a handoff at all, and got hung out to dry. Got hung out to dry, and that's coming out of a timeout too. Near the conclusion of tonight's game, we'll be selecting the Barano Heating and Air play of the game. Barano Heating and Air, we will always be there for you. Still got some time to figure out who's going to win these player and play of the game and drive of the game. First and 10, handoff Huggins. You know, about a yard. Huggins trots off the field. Placed by Tyler Howard in the backfield. Second and nine. Fake handoff. Sims going deep downfield for Maddox. Holton Harris, great coverage. It was in Maddox's back pocket on that one. Incomplete. Sims certainly has shown. He's got a strong arm. 
third and nine. Tawny in motion. Sims. Pass caught complete. First down Trojans. It's good to Malachi Acosta. Get about nine on the play. And an Anderson Hart first down for the Trojans. Nice looking play. Ball now out to the 38 yard line of Lincoln. Fake handoff. Sims feeling the pressure and brought down for a sack. Ball came out. Childs has it. And they're going to get the ball here. Hold on the Harris. Coming away with it. They ruled out a fumble. They said that Christian Sims was not down. Sims is going to plead his case right now. They're looking at Holton Harris and Hunter Trotman getting back there. Yep. Ball that ball is, is out. Good job. Good camera work there. That ball's definitely out. It's a fumble. Right place at the right time for Holton Harris. Big play for the Timberwolves. They're going to take over first down at their, let's see, at the child, uh, child's at the Lincoln 24 yard line. 214 to go in this third quarter, down 23 3. Jacobs firing the ball toward the end zone, incomplete. KJ Arnold coming across, safety help. That's that one away. I don't know that that ball gets completed if he doesn't bat it away, but it's still a good job by Arnold covering a lot of ground to get over there and knock that one down. We'll talk to KJ's mom before the game. Very proud of her son. Making a big play right there, second and ten. Hand off Jones loss of a yard after the loss it's going to be third and 12 ball now at the Lincoln 27 yard line play clock at five I think they're going to get this off they're going to have to burn a timeout. Clock stops. So big game tonight for these two teams. This uh, 5A District 2 championship on the line. Of course, there's, you know, just these two teams in it. Emily Peters on the sideline. What say you? Well, just like you mentioned, it's the district championship tonight and hoping to get them through it is a little rock under the left goal post. And I say little, it's it's a pretty big rock. Guys, it's been a tradition for the Trojans to bring this rock to every single game since 1991. The rock was actually imported from Colorado. It's made of granite and the symbolism there, because of course you guys knew it was coming. The granite is made from minerals that all come together to form this big, strong rock. So of course, the Rock is like the team coming together to form this big, strong unit. Guys, there's also grass in the big green box that carries the Rock. They take that from all of the fields that they uh, conquer their teammates on. So uh, we'll see if that Rock has some lucky juju for the Trojans tonight. Do you know how old I feel when she says that goes all the way back to 1991? <laughs> Third down pass gets tipped. And incomplete. I'm glad that they, you know, they've got a tradition. They, and, you know, all the way back to that. All the way back to that. It's like 10 years ago, isn't it? <laughs> but it's good. I mean, it's out there. They don't. They don't just sit it in a closet and forget about it and take it for granted. They, they make sure that nothing on that one. No, take it for granted. 
Granted. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. My old man brain was taking over there, and I wasn't thinking very quickly. So fourth and long. Hagen Purdue's going to come out for a long field goal attempt. Could be a 43 yarder. End over end line drive. No good. No good. So they had a nice field position after the Holton Harris fumble recovery. It's not able to convert that into some points. Trojans will take over at their own 20 yard line. Need the Childs needs their defense to come up big once again. Sims all alone in the backfield. And Deaver gets around the outside and going to get tackled about the 24 yard line. Gerard McDaniel taking the pitch. Gain a three on the play, second down and seven. Pass caught out of the backfield, going to be tackled for loss. Once again, Bryson Floyd. Tyler Howard, loss of a yard on the play. Child's defense trying their best to keep making plays and get the ball back for their offense to lessen the lead of the Trojans down 23-3. And that play will be the end of the third quarter. Your score, Lincoln 23, Child's 3. It's the Baron of Heating and Air Friday Night Rivals presented by Consolidated Dispatch Agency on Tallahassee CW. We start the fourth quarter. Gene Cox Stadium at Tallahassee, Florida. Lincoln leads this one 23-3. Ben Cinco, Eric Llewellyn, and Emily Peters on the sideline. Emily. Ben. One of the unsung heroes of Lincoln's really great season this year is, of course, their team manager. Her name is Kimara Brown, and I spoke with her earlier this week, and she told me all about the different things that she does. But one of the most important things is she's responsible for all of the film, and that's in practice, during games. And Eric, you can attest to this, too. Film is a major part of preparation and, of course, on the backside of games as well. Uh, and you might see a drone flying around throughout the game. She's also flying that, too, and they're getting film. I'm sure they'll go back and watch this game and critique our Friday Night Rivals broadcast, but uh, it's a huge part of this game, and Kimara Brown gets a huge shout-out from Coach Tyson and all of us tonight. She is definitely the unsung hero of this Lincoln team. All right, third down. Childs with a huge pass rush. They're able to bring Christian Sims down for a sack. I have no earthly idea how many hours were spent watching film between four years of high school and four years of college, but it was a lot. <laughs> well, great job there by the child's defense. LaShawn Douglas ultimately brings down Sims for the sack. Childs will wisely get away from that ball and will be downed at the 43 yard line. Childs will start their first possession of the fourth quarter. That's their work cut out for him down by 20. This tough Lincoln Trojans defense. First and 10. Jacobs caught Trevor Jacobs past midfield and dives ahead to the Lincoln 45 yard line gain at 12. First down for Childs. Ball came out late there, but he was already down. He's actually starting to get up when that ball got knocked loose. Chauncey Warren with the diving tackle there. Down. Jalen Jones. Tackle for loss. Lincoln saying they have the ball. The officials, I don't know if they've blown this dead or not. They did not. They're pursuing it, so 
Yeah, they're going to call that a fumble recovery and advanced all the way down to the child's 15 yard line. Yeah, there was nobody marking that ball down, so definitely no whistle in that situation. Get a look at the carry. Ball carrier heading down. Let's see I the can't ball tell. All there. No. Okay, well, now it should not be a touchdown. He should be down because he got up off the ground. Yeah, that's green there on the uh, to recovery in advance. Run that football. That that should be down back where the recovery was made. You cannot get up off the ground with the football in your hand and then yep. run. Well, the officials didn't see it that way. First and ten. Sims rolls to his left and. Holton Harrison gets cleaned up. Yep. Hunter Trotman also bringing him down. So a loss of about five on the play. Child's defense just keeps plugging away, plugging away. They've really, again, 23 points on the board, but you can't fault Child's defense for that at all. They've played a fantastic game against this Lincoln offense. And that's Harrison Trotman once again making a, a play. That happened earlier where it resulted in a sack and a fumble and a fumble recovery for Child's. The second and 15. Hand off to Huggins. Runs ahead for about a five yard game. And again, going back to the fumble, we, we obviously couldn't see anything in that replay as to whether the ball was out before Jalen Jones was, was he still running? Was he down? We don't know. But again, that should be down at the point of recovery there if it is a fumble. Uh, because he was on the ground on the turf when he recovered that before getting up and then running with it. He did not get up, then pick the ball up and then run. Ball now advanced in the Esposito's lawn and garden center red zone, third and 10. Sims feeling the pressure and goes down, gains about a yard or two. Fourth down, Thomas Arnold will come out for a field goal attempt. spot this at the 25 yard line so it'll be 35 yard attempt it's up and good three more points for the Trojans now ahead 26 to 3 in this ball game 8 31 to go in the fourth quarter Barano Heating Air Friday Night Rivals presented by Consolidated Dispatch Agency. Welcome back. Gene Cox Stadium, Tallahassee, Florida. 26-3. Lincoln leading this ball game. Here's tonight's Barano Heating and Air play of the game. Barano Heating and Air, we will always be there for you. Snap over the head. Recovered in the end zone. Touchdown, Chancey Jordan. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Nick Sebesky. I'm sorry, I was thinking a different play. That was Nick Sebesky who fell on top of the ball there. Caught me looking up. I was thinking it was a, a different one. So big play there by this big play by this uh, Trojans defense. Nick Sebesky. Play of the game, fumble recovery in the end zone for a touchdown. Thomas Arnold getting ready for a kickoff. Oh. A penalty on yep. the field goal there. Okay, gotcha. So they'll march it off on the kickoff. Let's see how Arnold handles this one. He's been booming him into the end zone this whole game. Let's see if he tries to do something a little short or just goes ahead and booms it out of the end zone again. And right you are, sir. Touchback. Child's down 26 3. We'll start here at their own 20 yard line. I just like, in that case, giving the ball to 20, I, I don't like trying to, and again, when you're up 23, giving them an opportunity to you know, get a fluky touchdown return or something like mm -hmm. that. I just. Good point. First and 10, Jacobs, cadet out of the backfield, makes a move, hits it upfield, about a five yard gain on the pass play. 
nice little cutback there after the catch by Cadet. I think in that kickoff situation, if it's a really tight game or maybe you're behind, you might try to do something different there. But again, up 23, I just boot it out of the end zone, give him the ball at the 20, and don't take any chances. And handoff, Cadets. It's about a yard. About third and four. Seven and a half minutes to go in this ball game. Taylor Jacobs, some final words from his offensive coordinator, John Hernandez. I guess he's the co-offensive coordinator. Hernandez down on the sideline, Taylor Jacobs Sr., the other co-offensive coordinator upstairs in the box. Get a delay there. Yeah, it looks like Childs called the timeout okay. just before. But they've had that a few times yeah, where they've been final timeout. Kind of late getting the play call and had had to burn a timeout to avoid the delay game. Don't forget, folks, next week, 7 o'clock right here on CW, we will have the Madison County T Cowboys at Florida High out in Southwood. Looking forward to that one. We said earlier this will be Florida High's second actual home game at this uh, at their home field. They had to have a couple of them. Um, at different locations because their field wasn't ready. They had some renovations going on. So tonight actually is their first home game of the season. They're taking on Gadsden County. So we'll have their second game. Looking forward to that one next Friday night right here on CW, 7 o'clock. Those two teams get together. Look out. So third and... Five for the Timberwolves at their own 25-yard line. Four receivers, one back. That back is Cadet. Jacobs, pass, caught, Matthews. And gain a 10 on the play. Big first down for the Timberwolves. Defender for Lincoln. I think slipped down on that one. Getting back up right as the catch was made. Five seconds on the play clock. First down. Cadet takes the carry and dives ahead for a gain of a yard. Second and long for the Timberwolves. Jalen Jones now in the backfield. Pass. Trevor Jacobs with the catch and unable to. Escape brought down gain of about six on the play. It'll be third and two. Great job of holding on there by Chancey Warren. Talking to Brady Van Lanningham is coming in to relay the play. Third and two. Jacobs trying to get the ball to Fryer. Oh, just too far behind him there. I'll bring up a fourth and two. Ball at the Child's 43 yard line. Jacobs feeling the rush, steps in the pocket, going to keep it himself. Not going to be able to get the first down. No gain on the play. It's a turnover on downs. And Childs now cannot stop the clock again. We'll go ahead and send it to break. 4.46 to go in this ball game. Lincoln leads us 26-3. It's Friday Night Rivals on Tallahassee CW. 26 three year score Friday Night Rivals Tallahassee CW. Let's take a look at the Consolidated Dispatch Agency drive of the game. Consolidated Dispatch Agency service to others. First and 10 play. Sims to Paul. Nice gain. Run there, Gerard McDaniel. And then 
capping off the drive with the long pass Christian Sims to Paul 46 yard catch that was Lincoln's second touchdown of the ball game Christian Sims Cabram Paul drive of the game first and 10 Sims looking to pass fires the ball downfield that's underthrown incomplete Sims took a hit still down didn't see that. I was following the path of the ball. But Christian Sims definitely feeling the effects of a hit. Oh. Let's get a look at what happened. Halton Harris brings him down. Clean hit. Just came down on his side, maybe a shoulder. Couldn't tell if the helmet hit the ground. Yeah, or sometimes you land on the ribs and get the wind knocked out of you. Or the defender comes down on your side on the ribs and knocks the wind out of you. Gotten to his feet, so that's good to see. Getting some applause from the crowd. It does look like he's favoring a you know, right leg. Him, such a valuable weapon for this child's I mean, for this uh, Trojans team coming into tonight 14 total touchdowns is accounted for two more tonight they come to the sideline see if they can help him with what's going on It'll be Tommy Hutchinson sophomore Played a bit this year. Second and ten. Hand off. That's Howard up the middle. And just like that, 43-yard touchdown run by the dangerous Tyler Howard. Six more points for the Trojans. Mm. Big hole right up the gut. Childs had a blitz on, so that cleared out the linebackers in the middle of the field, so there was nobody there once he got through that line of scrimmage. Arnold on for the extra point. And it is good. They score Lincoln 33, Childs 3. Tyler Howard coming in to, uh, tonight. 10 carries, 76 yards in the touchdown, that one touchdown. Uh, that he had coming in tonight we saw against uh, Leon a couple weeks back and we covered that game. So his second rushing touchdown tonight, 43 yards. This one is returnable. But a look going to the end zone for a touchback. Niles down by 34 and a half minutes to go in this ball game. Looking to put some points on the board before this thing ends. Taylor Jacobs with Jalen Jones in the backfield. First down. Jacobs, Pat, a pass caught by Trevor Jacobs and out of bounds at the 28 yard line. Eight. They stayed in, so they're oh. going to keep the clock running here. Okay, eight yard gain. Jacobs, pass, Ooh. caught by Fryer. That's a tremendous catch there by Cade Fryer. He's taking a punishment tonight. Yeah. Again, I, I've talked about this before. On a ball like that, you're the receiver. You're getting hit whether you make that catch or not. Mm -hmm. And you know that going up, and you'll see a lot of guys who won't hang on to that, but good job by Cade Fryer. And again, you're, you're, you're getting hit either way. You might as well make the catch. You know how much more spectacular that play looks if you make the catch and get hit mm -hmm. than if you don't make the catch and still get hit? Five-yard pass coming play. from the guy who's never had to make a catch like that. <laughs> pass caught. That's Fryer again. Yeah, 
Second and seven. Pass deep. Fryer. Oh. Fryer took another hit. And he's getting up slow again. And you're right, he did take a hit there. Oof. Not able to pull this one up in, I should say. That's deep ball. Going back to the point I was making on his last catch, a lot of times guys will go up in that situation. They know they're going to get hit. They'll kind of short arm the ball. They don't mm -hmm. make the catch. Kate, Kate Fryer's not short arming that at all. He just took a wallop there, and that's a tough one to hang on to. KJ Arnold on the uh, on the coverage of that one. Well, it's daddy about as tough as they come, and I would imagine Cade's in that same boat. He's up and walking, so and walking by himself. Yep. Good to see. So after the incompletion, will be third and seven for Childs. Their own. 37 yard line. Jacobs. Pass caught. Trevor Jacobs right about the spot for a first down. Uh, I don't think they gave it to no. him. I, I don't think that was a very favorable spot. He's no. going to need about a half a yard. They've got to get right to the 44 yard line and you see there the spot is the 43 and a half. Let's get a look at this. Nice job by Jacobs avoiding the pass rush. Stepping up. And it looked like where where the umpire walked out to spot it looked like he was going to have it but then he set the ball back. <laughs> Fourth down Jacobs incomplete. Turnover on downs. So Lincoln will take over. First and 10 at their own 44 yard line. 222 to go in this ball game. Trying to look on the sideline to see if I could see Christian Sims. Tommy Hutchinson coming back out at quarterback. First and 10. And off, flag down, ball carrier down after loss of two. Hold on, Lincoln. It's the referee with a quickness there made that signal. <laughs> Oh, there's a good look. Thanks, guys. Christian Sims getting looked at with the pads off under the tent. Hand off. Chauncey Warren on the carry. Bryson Floyd looking a little gimpy after the tackle for loss. Second and 20 now. Actually, second and 22. We won't have to snap this until about a minute eight or nine, probably. So they'll be happy. Oh, now a child's player down, Holton Harris, but he's right back up. I think he's got a cramp or something. They're going to go water break here. No, and now they're pulling everybody back out onto the field. Bryson Floyd also coming off. Holton Harris coming off. Well, he's got to. He went down. Yeah. So. He's fine. I again, I just think he might have had a calf seize up on him there. Mm -hmm. And Gain of about a yard. That's uh, Kylan Rogers. He should be down to one more play here. Got under a minute to go. 32 on the play clock. You snap it one more time and on third down here, and that should be it. Jakari Ward now in the backfield next to Tommy Hutchinson. Five seconds on the play clock. Ward will take the handoff and get dropped for a couple yard loss. That should be the last play of this ball game. 
So Lincoln, after this victory, will now go to six and one. They will be the 5A District 2 champions, and they head to Niceville, who's 6-0 and next weekend. That'll be a heck of a ball game. Childs drops to 1-6. and Head to North Bay Haven in Panama City. And let's highlight our Bear No Heating and Air player of the game. Bear No Heating and Air, we will always be there for you. That player of the game, number 95, Chancey Jordan. Nice tackle for loss there on Jalen Jones. Help him make a sack. He's all over the field tonight, dancing, making plays in the backfield. There's the big safety. And enjoying this victory on the sidelines. That's Chancey Jordan, your Bear No Heating and Air player of the game. So we'll go ahead and send it to break. Come on back for the presentation of the FNR Trophy. 33-3, your final. Welcome back to Gene Cox Stadium, Tallahassee, four to your final score, Lincoln 33, Childs three. Emily Peters down on the field with the victorious Lincoln Trojan squad. Emily. Well, they're not only Barano Heating and Air's Friday Night Rivals, presented by Consolidated Dispatch Agency champions, but they're also yeah. district champions. And of course, our player of the game, Chancey Jordan, you had a big part in this victory. Walk me through the emotions right now. And yeah, emotions are high. We got a great team win today. One district champs, next step state championship. Well, best of luck for the rest of the season. You earned this for your team and congratulations, Lincoln High School. Yeah. All right. Chancey Jordan, the victorious Lincoln Trojans. As Emily said, they are the district champs. Face a tough Niceville opponent next week. Speaking of next week, we will be in Southwood, Madison County traveling to take on Florida High. Seven o'clock right here on the CW. Looking forward to that. We will see you then. Thanks for being with us. Once again, your final 33 to three Lincoln over Giles. Enjoy your weekend. We will see you next Friday night on Friday Night Rivals, Tallahassee CW. Thank you to all of our wonderful sponsor partners, Barano Heating and Air, Consolidated Dispatch Agency, Warner Hyundai and Warner Kia, and Stubbs Roofing. To our great sponsor supporters, Anderson and Hart, Brian Barnard's Flooring America, Esposito Lawn and Garden Center, The Shoebox, and Weston Trawick. And finally, both participating high schools and their administrations for their support.